and then 48 hours and 72 hours typically is usually the max kind of intermittent fasting and for maintenance which someone might choose to do once a week every couple weeks or a couple times in the month so quick benefits to fasting before we get into a little bit of the science of it it improves it claims to improve the aging of your skin reducing inflammation it facilitates fast fat loss and that's because you're spending more time burning calories when you're not in an in an eating state um, and so this facilitates uh, fat loss and I'm going to talk about a kind of exciting term um, related to that which also relates to the longevity and which is living longer and quality of life um, and this is where the body actually has the ability to clear waste from cells more efficiently. So you're actually renewing your cells and you're shuttling the old cells out. Um, your immune system increases because your body has more time to repair itself. It balances the blood sugar out because when you're not, when you're going through hours of not eating, your blood sugar, which when you take in glucose uh, in the form of sugar, your blood sugar increases, and whether you're eating, and we've talked about this before, simple or complex carbs, your sugar might spike up or have a gradual release. Intermittent fasting helps to balance out that blood sugar because you're not getting any supply of sugar and your body naturally balances that out. This is why, maybe Jose, you can um, chime in here. When you first try an intermittent fast, it's extended, you might get a little grumpy, you might feel some emotions and that's because your body might? <laughs> yeah. check out his youtube video to see if that's <laughs> a, a might or a certainty <laughs> um and that's simply because what was i saying yeah your emotions your body isn't used to it um to begin with uh your body takes time to adjust to these levels you know it's funny i was listening so i remember now what it was the longevity um, paradox. Have you read that book or? It sounds familiar. I might have. Yeah. He's done the plant paradox as well, I think. Anyway, it was really good. And he was saying, um, yeah, I heard like words like autophagy or how do you even, I don't even know how to spell that. I'm like, but the eat, the way you eat your own cells kind of thing, it eats up your, there it is. There it is. There it is. All right. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Wait. Oh, okay. I thought it was OTO. Okay. Um, what else? What else was he saying? Oh yeah, and like to a certain point when you're like starving, um, eventually you gain mental clarity because now you're in the fight or flight mode, so you have to hunt, right? But anyway, go ahead. I might That's be right. going ahead of your slides, but go. No, it's pretty, exactly. It's really cool, really cool stuff. And I never wanted to fast because I enjoy eating. Although I'm not fat, I, I mean, I really enjoy eating. Yeah, and you know, to to piggyback on that comment. Um, the positive side to doing IF is when you, with enough willpower, extend your fasted state, you reward yourself with food and the food you really appreciate. It might taste different, like the flavors burst even more because you've gone hours of not eating and just maybe having water, which is, you know, quite bland in taste. I love water, but that's the great thing about it is you reward yourself and as you continue that habit, your body and your mind starts to build this healthy connection with food and not so much that you're depriving yourself, but understanding the benefits of it, should you need it or should you feel better, whether it comes to your physical activity, your sleep, your work uh, performance, all of that, your aesthetic. So let's jump into what your intermittent fast looks like by the hour a little bit. So Jose did the 24 hour fast, but maybe you wanna try 12 hours uh, or 16 hours. So what's happening here? So you can see what's going on. At 12 hours, you're just getting started. Um, actually, most people by nature might fast for 12 hours without even realizing it or without doing it intentionally, right? Whether it's schedule related, whether it's just their body clock, and so it's, that's typical, it's not bad. It's better than maybe an eight hour fast or four hours. So 
I, I just want to be clear. So 12 hour fast is because they go to bed, let's say for example, at 10 PM, then they skip breakfast and then they have brunch. Was that why they would do a 12 hour fast that they don't even know about, right? Exactly. So okay. say you sleep at 10, you're like Jose, you sleep really early, which is super good. Actually, I sleep at nine sometimes, 8.30. Wow. I'm spent. I, I give 100% every freaking day. So by the time it's like sunset, I'm ready to sleep. Shower, yeah. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like to say the deeper, the, the, what is it called? The higher the peaks, the deeper the valleys. There you go. Wonderful. So, yeah. 5 a.m. Yeah. club, man. Oh, club. sometimes 4.30, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead, go ahead. I'm just Super. checking for comments here. Yeah, so say you sleep at about 9 or 10. You wake up at 4 in the morning. You don't eat your next meal until about 9 or 10. So that's your 12-hour fasted state. And then you give yourself about, you know, same time. Maybe you finish dinner. You start eating 9 or 10. You finish dinner 9, 10. So that's your 12 hours and 12 hours. Um, once you hit 16 hours, you're kind of pushing it a little bit because you're spending energy during your waking day. You're doing things. Maybe you choose to work out during this time to maximize the fat burn if that's one of your goals. And uh, I can recommend, you know, BCAAs, branched chain amino acids, which help to add some taste to your water, but also allows um, amino acids to be shuttled into your muscles. So you're also repairing muscle. Um, but the glucose in your liver starts to deplete. And this is when fat burning begins because now your body is starting to use fat for fuel. Once the gl glucose uh, levels deplete, that is. So about 16 to 18 hour mark, your body is starting to churn. It starts to become like a fat burning machine. Um, 18 hours is what's sometimes called the sweet spot. And this is the reason for the um the popular 18 6 hour fast so six hours of eating window 18 hours so maybe you have lunch and then you stop eating at 6 p.m so like 12 to 6 p.m or 2 to 8 p.m anything like that um and this is something that people integrate or they incorporate into their daily lives so they actually do this on a daily basis because their body has adjusted and they start to not be hungry for breakfast anymore. If you, st if you had the habit of having breakfast every day, and we'll talk a bit about um, hunger and appetite and what actually uh, stimulates hunger, that feeling of hunger, then your body starts to adjust to 18 hours, 20 hours. You're really starting to burn. You might move into ketosis where you're really using all the fat, stored fat, um, of your body as energy and at 24 hours which Jose reached the other day is um, is when autophagy autophagy <laughs> begins what is autophagy <laughs> yeah so how do you even say it Jeez. I don't know. if you got some uh, comments <laughs> AP potato potato yeah, yeah. Anyway. Go yeah. Ahead. so autophagy I'm gonna call it um, the meaning of phagy actually means to eat. So what's happening here, and this is relating to the cells, is your cells are actually eating themselves. But your cells are eating damaged cells in order to regenerate newer and healthier cells. So what's happening here is you're actually regenerating. You go into this phase of regeneration. And this is why IF is linked to longevity, so living longer, living quality lives, and actually turning the clock backwards. Yeah, you should li really listen to the uh, audiobook I was listening to. It's really good. And they even say that there's like a, a way to trick your body that you don't even have to fast. I can't remember. But um, it's pretty much That's the same stuff. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they talk about gut health and all that. Ooh, I love that. So maybe I'll include here some tips, right? So when I, when I first started dabbling in intermittent fasting, which was back in 2015, um, I first started with, the, I did this the exact same way. I started with 12 and 16 and I added the hours day by day to the point that I did my 24 hour fast. I did alternate fasting. I did 48 and 72 hour fasting, which I incorporated every week even and every two weeks. I did this over the course of um, three to five months as I was preparing for my 
25 day water fast. But what helped me was drinking green tea because technically you're in a fasted state. If you're not consuming, you know, five to 10 or 15 calories, you're still in this fasted state and you're still able to burn calories. You're not entering any eating, eating phase. So green tea helps. Having water, maybe with a bit of flavor, BCAAs helps, um, maybe just for the sanity, right, and the taste, and you get the benefits and the antioxidants of green tea when you drink it. There are people out there who practice IF and they drink cold brew, for example, or black coffee in the morning, um, but this depends on your, your body, if it's something that works well with your body, because coffee is acidic and you don't have anything in your stomach, but so cold brew is a nice option because it's less acidic. It's not, um, cold brew is not um, produced through heat, rather in a cold production uh, manner. So these are some things to keep in mind if you're planning on trying it out. And my advice would be to let your body adjust day by day. And then you can start every day or every other day to increase the hours that you're fasting. And so two things I wanted to mention. Um, ghrelin and leptin. I'm sure Jose came across this in the audio. Ghrelin, in short, is the appetite simulator. So what you feel in the top of your tummy, uh, top part of your stomach, is maybe when you get the growling noise also, this is due to ghrelin. So it simulates appetite. It kind of tells you, I want something to eat. Whereas leptin is the hormone that suppresses appetite. So it's that that full gives you that feeling of satiety or fullness. Um, it takes about 20 minutes for the body to register to the brain that it's full. So as a tip, as a general, especially if you're fasting, still take your time. Don't like waft the food down, right? Because then you might overeat and then your stomach expands. Um, because in the time that you're fasting, your stomach starts to go back into its normal size. It is a muscle. It's elastic. It expands and it contracts. So give your body some time to register that it's full. Um, doing, practicing IF allows for your body's ghrelin and leptin levels to balance out. So say your routine, for example, in the regular day is you wake up um, and you have a bowl of cereal or you have some toast or you have something to eat. So then your body basically um, becomes attuned to eating first thing in the morning and it knows to release that ghrelin um, hormone, right? To notify your body, hey, this is usually what, what I, the time that I eat, so that's my appetite at that time. And then the next day you're like, okay, I'm gonna try this IF, I'm not gonna have breakfast. So next day you wake up, usually the time that you have your breakfast, and you don't have breakfast. But then you get a bit, a bit of discomfort and you get that gargly feeling apart from like the mood swings and the drop in blood sugar because the hormone is being released. Um, your body is saying, I have an appetite when maybe you don't. It's just that the levels of ghrelin in your body are rising during this time. It knows that that's when you're usually having breakfast. But then say, so you've successfully skipped the second, that second day. So first day you had breakfast, second day you skipped breakfast, third day you skipped breakfast again. And you're like, hey, I'm actually not as hungry as I was yesterday. But I'm still feeling a bit of discomfort. Like, okay, I'm going to drink some water, drink some water to subside that feeling of discomfort in the stomach, make sure I'm getting hydrated, um, maybe fill my body with some green tea or some cold tea because it's super hot here. So that's day three. Day four, you skip breakfast again. And you're like, wow, I'm actually not hungry anymore. This is, this is a breeze. And then you go and have your, your next meal as you normally would. So it does take time. And so give your body the time that it needs to adjust. And eventually your body becomes accustomed to it. Um, so again, depending on your goals, if it's body related, if you want to cut body fat, then this is a great way to do that because your body does become a fat burning machine at a certain hour, a certain point. When it depletes the glycogen levels, it starts to use fat as fuel. Um, Here, I have a question yes. that uh, has been asked anyway um, by numerous guys, but I'm sure they're going to ask this eventually. Um, but wouldn't that slow down my metabolism? 
I'm sure it's a complex answer as well. Yes, that's a good question. And there's a lot of debate about this online and a lot of- Oh my God, um, nutrition in general is a big debate. Yeah. <laughs> should yeah. I eat meat or should I not? Well, besides the uh, environmental you know, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And there's a lot of papers, a lot of studies that have been done and about the metabolism. Based on my research, what I've done, and I encourage you to also look it up, is um, about 72 hours to beyond is when your body's metabolism actually starts to slow down. So your body's metabolism is not slowing down 24 hours or 48 hours in. Your body mm -hmm. still has some stores. It's still very much able to um, do your day-to-day -day and have energy. But from what I found, it's about 72 hours when your body starts to slow down the metabolism. So you don't have anything to worry about there, if that's what you're worried about. Cool. And yeah. the funny thing is you're talking about, I thought that was gremlin, gre gre gremlin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it really makes you think that, you know, our body's really like, well, we are habits, or sorry, we're, how do you say it? creatures of habits there that's what mm -hmm. i was trying to say so when you eat more sugar your body craves it kind of thing right so uh, i don't know it's just like so many things talking about like how you just have to build a routine and then just get used to it and eventually it gets easier right so, tr so true and again i know i know as i mentioned it 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 does start in the mind because you can do it you do have it in you to do it it is possible you're not going to fall down and you know, hopefully not pass out if your glucose levels are not, you know, too, too high or too low and things like that. It is possible to do. Uh, we are creatures of habit. And I did want to mention that another distinguishing factor between hunger and appetite, true hunger and appetite. Appetite is when we, you know, when we want to be eating something, right? When we desire to eat something, you have a desire to eat something. Hunger is when your body actually needs fuel. Is that what means... you found on uh, Wikipedia? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good one. That's something I you know, learned today. Yeah. So it's something that I, that I came across, you know. Um, but I do feel like there, is, there definitely is a distinguishing um, concept between food that we just want to eat and desire to eat and what our body actually needs, right? So I feel that my experience with intermittent fasting at least is that you start to become more in tune with your body and you start to distinguish what is true hunger what is real hunger am i actually hungry do i actually need this food what are, what are the foods that i'm craving during this time that you're not eating you might have like foods that pop up in your mind and you're like hey that's actually not a good food but because of the habit of eating this food my body's craving it so i need to switch to another food so that's, that's a little bit on, on that. Hunger, what is hunger? What this time of not eating allows you to do is to become a little more conscious of your body and become more in tune to what it actually needs. And that might go as in detail to my body needs more potassium, my body needs more carbohydrate or fat, vitamin C over time. So that is um, an overview of IF. I hope you learned something new. If there was something. Oh, wow. That was your last slide? Okay. You're really on time. <laughs> I'm just checking them. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot you can say about it, right? But yeah. um, just want to give time for people to ask questions. But in summary, you know, you can, you can see the stages of what happens during your fast. You start to burn fat as fuel. Your cells start to eat. Um, the bad cells and renew itself, um, the release of growth, growth hormone, your insulin levels go down and balance out. And at the end of the day, your uh, immunity increases and your cells are able to renew and rejuvenate. Cool. Uh, there's no other questions really um, besides just comments here. But Gigi was just saying, I've done intermittent, intermittent fasting for two years. Good for you. That's you great. go, girl. That's awesome. <laughs> I eat my first solid food at 1 p.m. I, I just drink two cups of coffee in the morning before my first meal. That's what I start with. Now. Well, every so often, anyway, just coffee and see how long. But yeah. I'm sorry, that's me now. I'm just talking to Gigi. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Gigi. Wow. So yeah. Gigi's uh, did keto for 
for six for six months, five months, sorry, and lost oh, you make glasses. 25 pounds. Ooh, the best yes. time to do it is in November during Thanksgiving until the beginning <laughs> of spring. Cool. Uh, Gigi's in the States. I think um, Seattle. Very yeah. Awesome. That's great. I was advice. even listening to this. So anyway, the, something that maybe we could talk about eventually is uh, I'll send you the uh, audio book and it's really good stuff. Um, but they were also talking about, and here's the thing, right? Because I lived in, I, I, did you live in Australia too for a bit? I did, yes. Okay, so for me, Canada, right? And anyway, um, they were also talking about eating seasonally, right? So you shouldn't be eating fruits all year because they're not really supposed to be eaten all year because you're supposed to go between like a, a growing phase, which is like uh, spring and summer, and then a winding down phase, which is like uh, fall and winter, right? So you should follow what is local. But here in the Philippines, I don't know what is season i was actually going to google that later because like fruits i don't know if they grow all year but you know you don't see fruits in the winter time right so so yeah i try to eat as seasonally as possible but with globalization you can get fruits whenever you want to wherever, That's from wherever. so yeah they're just talking about that in the gut health and um intermittent fasting as well and how it works so i'll send you that stuff yeah that's good um definitely eating with the seasons because that's when the fruit is sweetest it's the best quality and it's picked that it's ripest, right? Not right. when it's green. You know, that's why I really want to shop local. Yes, um, I mean it's abundance. Hard and, yeah, I mean when I was in, in Canada, abundance. it was easier, right? I don't know, just easier to talk to people and the farmers because they would sell it themselves here. Sorry, but it's just different. There's that barrier for me, even though I can speak the language. It's just different. Right. Yeah. Anyway, maybe that's yeah. another topic. Yeah. That's All right, let me just double check if there's anything else. Uh, no, nope, we're good. We did our job. All right, guys, um, do you want to just say a few things before you go? Yeah, super. Well, if you have any questions and you're listening, uh, do shoot me or Jose a message. There is great benefits for it. If it suits your lifestyle, if you want to challenge yourself and give it a go, um, definitely, definitely try. Would I... I have a question. Should I just do it on Sundays if I were to do this consistently? Yeah, I'd say... I mean, Sundays just because I, I don't really work on Sundays, but sometimes I do. Yeah, I mean, if it, suits your, if it suits your lifestyle, like some people have family day on Sundays, so they eat with their family. It might be a little more difficult to uh, not that's true. eat at the table. Mm. But if it suits your work lifestyle, your social <laughs> lifestyle, yeah. then okay. pick the days that make it easy for yourself. Just it's a little easy, easier. Just hide from society and just <laughs> fast. <laughs> yeah, not so bad now. It makes it a little easy now. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. That's why. That's why I said yes. Because so, my sister was like, "Hey, do you want to try one day fast?" I'm like, "Lockdown? Eh, sure, why not?" Yeah. So it wasn't that hard, really. No, no. So that whenever work. I felt hungry, I had to stay away from the kitchen. That's it. But I felt like I, I had to grind my teeth every so yeah, often. Yeah, I like, saw that part. Mm hmm. Is that, but not like crazy, not like crazy grinding. No, nothing like that. But I, I feel like mm, hungry, and I, I think I would imagine the food and just start, you know. And that's it. Then I catch myself and I stop. That's like two seconds of grinding. That's it. Yeah. Did you ever feel that way during your five day uh, fast? I never. No, I never grinded my teeth. No. But that's one thing too, right? I, I realized it's not even about um, food. It's just about chewing. That sensation of like. So I'm, I'm not, yeah, so I'm going to do carrots. Um, what else can I do? Um, what else can I do? I'm asking you. Cucumber. In terms of? Like just the crunching. crunch. Oh, yeah. just the crunch. Mm, depends what, yeah, cucumber is good. Depends what you like, like healthy chips. That's yes. Really I love yeah. chips. With an air fryer. Or, yeah. Or, or just bake it. Yeah. Kale chips. That yeah. has a big crunch to it. It gets it. messy though when you don't shoot Super it the right way. Messy. Just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, kale chips are actually really good. Super All good. Right. I guess there's no other questions. Um, maybe we could do something again next week. I'm actually feeling hungry now, so the Ooh. energy level is dipping. Ooh, me too. <laughs> 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 I see that. <laughs> What's right. alive, Jose? <laughs> uh, next week, next week. Awesome, right. awesome. Thanks, Christine. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay hydrated. Bye. Bye.